All right, we might as well get started. Uh, so first off, the stream's being recorded. So full disclosure. Um, my name's Ryan Hagelstrom. I wrote this extension, uh, Better Combat Effects and Better Combat Effects Gold. Uh, we'll go over some of the stuff in both of the extensions. Um, if you have any specific questions about how to write a specific effect, we'll hold that to the end. Um, if you have questions about stuff I'm going over as we go over it, just speak up. All right? Sounds good. So we're not going to go through all the tags. Uh, we're going to go through more like concepts. And the reason we're not going to go through everything is we'd be here date. Um, so we'll start it off with <clears throat> the basic assumption is you know how to write fantasy grounds. Um, if you don't know how to write fantasy grounds effects, that's fine. You'll still get stuff out of this class. Um, but go to the Atla Atlassian uh, page on 5e effects. Uh, it tells you all about it, what is built in natively to Fantasy Grounds, and how to do it. And it's really just practice and understanding and reading this document. If you understand this document, you will understand how to write effects with better combat effects, because it just extends on it. Uh, so a couple of terms we're going to go over first. So a label, well, there's clauses, and clauses are separated by semicolons. Label is, or a label is the first clause, uh, so keep that in mind. Um, there's modifier tags, which is the uppercase and then the colon, and I probably will refer to these as just tags. Uh, values is either number or dice. And then descriptor, all these words separated by commas. So let's get into it, I guess. So we'll go over some of these tags. So this is the in-module documentation. So they're grouped by kind of what they do. Uh, add effect, these are grouped. So these, all these tags here, when an effect is added, this tag happens. Um, then attack, if you have some sort of attack roll you need to do, there's all these options for attack. Um, then we'll go down to damage. If you need to do something specific on damage, all these are for damage. Um, expire effect, uh, this uh, adds an effect uh, when the effect expires, or it can be a condition. And the effect is a label that you have in your custom effects. So if you wanted to do, well, like for example, we'll do TikTok. We have TikTok here, tick, expire, add talk. We put that on Anathema. So it's set to one round and do it. There you did. She go. Um, talk. Yeah, you'll see over here. So it does tick, and then as you go through, it does talk. It adds uh, the other effect, and you can chain those all together. So, for example, like if you had a sword that you know did fire on one swing and acid on another, that might be useful. Um, what else do we got? Uh, we have the mis miscellaneous tags. Uh, we'll go through some of those a little bit later. Ongoing damage, uh, FG has in there built in DMGO. So that does at the start of the turn. That's why there's not DMGOS on here. Um, but there is at the end of the turn and then also at the start of the source, the actor who applied the effects turn. Um, what does that actually mean? So the source of the actor who applied the effect Normally, when you apply effects, if it doesn't say anything down here, uh, it was applied by the person who it is on. If it's applied by somebody else, 
as applied by Shane and Taskable. So that's what it means when it says the source of the actor who applied the effect. Uh, uh, ongoing regeneration, that's just you know healing instead of damage of ongoing. Um, ongoing saves, these are pretty common. This is in Better Combat FX, the uh, free version and the paid version. Um, there's save on start a turn, save on end a turn. Again, save on the actor who applied the effects, so it it evaluates on their turn. Um, so you have these. And there's also save add that could be um, that adds an effect. So saves and then save damage. So the way these work is. You, normally you do saves as one clause, and then you do save damage. Um, and then you can either do like save add. So if it applies like, oh, if you failed, you get exhaustion or you get poisoned, right? Like, so you would do save add and then you would put the, the name in after that. Um, these are all tied together in the effect so that save damage only uh, works when, on when saves gets rolled. And the reason that is normally what happens with the effects processing is when you have tag in there, it'll uh, grab all the tags on there. If you have like four different effects with saves, different saves, um, and we don't want the damage to apply to any time you pull a save. So the uh, save damage is applied or applied only to the effect that it is in. Uh, we have rest tags, so if you have to do something on long or short rest, you can do that. Save versus condition, we will talk about this later. Stack, um, it allows you to stack uh, effects, which means you can have the same effect on the same person. Normal or vanilla fantasy grounds allows you to do this. That's how it operates in 5e normally. A lot of other rule sets don't allow that to happen. Um, to enable uh, the restriction of multiple of the same effect going on somebody. So like if you have players who like, oh, they raged and they raged, and then now all of a sudden they have like five rages on them. So you can restrict that with uh, turning one of the, op the options uh, set to off. And But if you still want the stack, you can add this. Um, these I recommend not using. And we'll use the change or change state stuff, and we'll. Show. So how do you really go through this? So <clears throat> the way I do it is, you have something you want to do, and you go find. Oh, I want to do something on attack, right? Or I want to do something on damage, or I want to do. So you kind of hunt for it like that, and then once you find it, you read. Uh, here, but the real power of these is in the descriptors because this is kind of like a force multiplier um, because you can make it apply to certain specific uh, situations. So, for example, attack, hit, add. Uh, activate effect when actor, actor's attack is successful. Okay, so we want to activate it because it must be disabled currently. But you can also put in there range, which would be melee or uh, ranged, or attack type, which is spell or weapon. Uh, so you can have it applied to only spell attacks, only weapon attacks, only melee attacks, or only ranged attacks, or you can kind of combine the two. You can have it be like a ranged spell attack. So you can make that tag only happen on these specific conditions. So we'll talk about um, the attack type. So spell weapon, right? So this is a normally in Fantasy Grounds. Fantasy Grounds, uh, vanilla does not, there's no concept of differentiation between spell and weapon attacks. Um, so I built it out. Uh, there is code in there to, it looks like they kind of half built it and they never completed it. 
So I completed it out. I sent the code changes to SmiteWorks, but they declined to put it in. But they're very resistant to accepting any third-party code. So like, for example, so if we come to Anathema, uh, and these attack types can also be applied to the vanilla Fantasy Grounds uh, uh, tags. So let's say we want to do attack spell. Do attack. And so we want to increase Anathema's spell attack by 10, right? So target. Bring Anathema up. So if we do a weapon attack, right? So it doesn't add anything. But if we do now a spell attack, now this. If you roll it without, it won't add anything to the attack uh, tag. But if we do something like Guiding Bolt uh, attack, so this is a spell attack. And as you can see, it adds 10 to the attack roll. Um, and like I said, you can also do that with AC, crit, damage, cover, all these built-in stuff, you can add spell or you can add weapon, and it will restrict it to one or the other, which is kind of nice. Um, so we'll go through the descriptors. So some of these are standard uh, D number. These are the same as Fantasy Grounds. Range, this is vanilla. Attack type, this is new, added. We just went over that. Damage type, that's the same. Stat, that's the same. That's the same. That's the same. Class, this is for sneak attack. There's a sneak attack tag in there. Um, it restricts it to rogue. But if you put the class descriptor in, you can get this to fire on another class. And sneak attack also works on uh, NPCs. Mm -hmm. And if you just put Sneak attack as a, one of their traits. It will pick up sneak attack, and the, the damage will be based on their, uh, on their CR. So let's see if we can do this. Taz Cobble has sneak attack because she's a rogue. Let's say she has advantage on the roll. Do. And sneak attack, you must have it only fires when there's a, when it's a finesse weapon or you know the appropriate range weapons. Finesse, finesse. Power. Oops. So it'll put when the sneak attack uh, actually applies. It'll add um, the damage, the appropriate damage based on her level. And then when, then when you roll the damage, or roll the sneak attack damage to you, and then it'll take it off, and it will disable sneak attack so it's once per turn. Um, and it does that all automatically, all internally. So all you need is the sneak attack tag and automated sneak attack. I don't have to worry about it. All right, back to the descriptors. Um, effect. Um, that's, like I said, you have to add the label. Uh, so anytime you have effect, you just add the first clause in the effect. And those have to be in your custom effects window. So you put those in your custom effects window, and if you have them, and any of these tags that have effect in them, you can add effect. So like, and all these have add at the end. So 
add a factor condition, add a factor condition. So that's how you do that. Um, you can also just put the condition in and it will add the condition. You don't need a separate custom effect with a label on it. Um, condition, like I said, that's the same condition. It must be all lowercase. I think that's still the case. I don't know if I changed that. Um, SDC, this is one that people use quite often. So what this does is it's a macro that automatically calculates the spell save DC of the effect when it's put on. And that's useful because you can write generic effects. And you don't have to figure out what that number is before you put it in. The system will automatically put it in there. So like if we have anathema and ma the web. So it replaces SDC with 17, which is anathema spell safe DC. And you can also write those into your uh, actions in your powers if you want, or you don't have to, but um, that's <clears throat> this is really nice because you can write generic effects and you only need to write one effect and apply it to your NPCs or your PCs. And it figures it out automatically. Um, advantage, disadvantage, these are all for uh, ongoing saves. Uh, you can force the save to have advantage if you put this in there disadvantage if you want uh the r will remove it when the save is successful which often is the case with uh spells sometimes you want to remove the say or the whole effect if this the save uh fails or is successful and you would just put ra in there um D will disable the effect instead of remove it. Half magic, that is vanilla fantasy grounds. And this one will invert the roll. So it will happen when uh, it's a, uh, I think I have this document wrong, but uh, it, it will, you'll have save damage on success rather than fail. Um, probably, I don't know if I've ever actually, I think some people have. Um, also, you can add these to any effect. If you want the effect disabled when you add it to the CT instead of enabled, because they're always enabled when you when they get applied, uh, you can add DE in there, and the effect will get applied, and it will be set to off. And then E, you'll remove the effect if the source of the effect drops to zero hit. So like. Uh, if you have some effect on you and the opponent dies, essentially uh, it gets removed, which is also useful in some situations. Do we have any questions so far? Uh, hearing none, um, we'll go over some of these specific tags here in MIS. Um, DC, uh, it's not really used, but if you have a save DC that you want to adjust. Uh, you can add this, and then whatever this macro is replaced with, it will add whatever the value is here. Um, be careful with this one. You put it on somebody, they die. But it is useful. Um, duration, if you want to set the duration dynamically, you can put a dice string in here, and that will set uh, it how long it lasts, um, depending on what the dice rolls. Uh, the use is deprecated. Don't use that. Uh, use the change state. Um, effect init, if you want to force the initiative value, act on initiative value, which is the second number over here. So when this explain this. Uh, this means that this number here is decremented every time on initiative 11. And this is usually bound, oh, not usually, almost always bound to 
the initiative that the person who applied it is. So Anathema applied it, so this will decrement on Anathema's turn. Um, if you want that to be something different, you can use dir and it will set. You can use a number or you can use a dice string. Uh, you got, uh, yeah, effect initiative. That's what I meant. Uh, elusive, this is the 19th level rogue uh, feature that they get. Uh, no attack rolls have advantage against this actor, so there's no way that anybody can get advantage. Immune, this overrides the current immune. Uh, you do immune custom, and you can uh, be immune to an effect. So you do immune custom, parentheses, put your effect label in there, and then you'll be immune to that effect. This comes in handy specifically on auras. If you're doing some auras and you want, you know, you save and you're immune to an aura, um, often that's the case. So prevent it from keep re-adding it over and over again. Uh, Rakesh, that's the Rogue Peak class feature. Um, it's sneak attack plus. So if you put if you have this feature, you don't need sneak attack. SDC, uh, this will um, add to your uh, save DC. Um, so if your uh, spell DC, if you want to set that as um, for, you want to increase it or decrease it, uh, you can have a number in here, and then you can also put a damage type. So if you if your spell DC is only increased for, say, fire spells, you can do that, and it will be the same for everything, you know, normally for everything else. Uh, sneak attack, and then unflankable, that requires the flanking and range extension. Um, but if you have that extension and you use flanking and range, the optional rules, you have somebody that can't be flanked, you can throw unflankable on them and it'll disable flanking for that. Uh, all right, let's go through some examples of ongoing saves. So we'll put the anathema cast, uh, something on toss, toss cobble. It's an ongoing save. I'll show you how these work specifically. So this is, it's going to do a save at the start of the turn. It's a wisdom save. And then if you fail, you're going to get 1d4. So it'll automatically roll the save and uh, got uh, what she do? She she has disadvantage. Uh, failed and took the poison damage, and that'll just stay, stay on there. On there now. Oh. oh, got some feedback. Some feedback. Hello. All right. Seems. To be um. So yeah, that will. Uh, if you have ongoing saves, that's what you want to do. Again, you can do it at the beginning or end of turn or beginning or end of the person who applied the turn. Uh, you can also do save add. Uh, like I said, if you need to apply a condition or an effect because you fail to save, you can do that, add that tag in there. All right, let's talk about save versus condition. So, What we will automatically do here, save versus condition, is a lot of the, or there are a number of traits, such as halfling brave, right? You have advantage against saving and uh, saving throws against being frightened. That's great. Uh, I got to remember to do that. Uh, but with better combat effects gold, you don't. So say we have the ancient black dragon, right? We didn't add anything here to sneak it. Uh, we didn't add anything here. So, frightful presence on Sheena Toscobble. Uh, 
do that, right? So she gets advantage, and it says she got advantage because brave. So what it's doing under the hood is it's processing the traits. And if you have this specific text, advantage on saving throws against being frightened, it will automatically give you advantage on saving throws versus frightened. Um, and the specific text to get that is, is that? I think it's somewhere. Even put it in here. here it is. If you want to get that to work, you can do that for a homebrew. Um, save versus condition. And it also does damage type as well. So you can do uh, save versus damage if you have advantage on saves, such as Dwarven Resilience. It says you have a saving throws of advantage against poison. That's different than poisoned which is the condition. Poison is the damage type. Um, so it will automatically parse stuff like band, ancestry, turning resistance, brave. It also does this for your NPCs. So like this lich here has turning resistance. So if we go to the anathema and we try to turn undead, a lich will automatically get advantage. And you don't have to go, oh, I didn't forgot about my lich had advantage or my you know my npc had whatever but you can make your own homebrew traits you just have to follow this uh, verbiage advantage disadvantage some amount of words it's going to find saves or saving throw some amount of words are going to happen and then the conditions so you know turned whatever so you may ask, how is it actually doing that? Because when you hit the roll button, how does it know it's to give save versus turned? Well, under the hood, what's it, what it is doing is it's processing the power, and it's going, OK, what's next? And it says, um, you know, if we have turned, that means they are being turned. And it passes that down with the roll, and it evaluates that and goes, okay, so uh, this is a roll against being turned, and so we should give it advantage. And like I said, that also happens with uh, damage type. If you explicitly want to give it a uh, advantage, you can do like advantage condition. And we will do task. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is a damage type, advantage condition. Uh, Black Dragon is going to do acid breath. It gets advantage. Uh, you can also do disadvantage if that's what you want. All right. Any other questions? Any questions on that? So I should also say with the differentiation between spell and weapon attacks, you might also notice what it probably don't actually notice. Um, it puts in here this M, so that's a like a melee attack. And uh, the system actually uses these, but something that somebody normally probably wouldn't notice. But it might be significant because some of this might, depending on how you have, if you have like sirenscape triggers, um, if I recall, something in here ends up changing. So it might break some sirens triggers depending on how you have them set up. Um, but let's see. Yeah, here, paralyzing touch spell. So if you look at that with vanilla, it's, that S is not going to be there, or the Ws. 
Um, another thing that we have in here is we have tactics. So pack tactics is a common uh, trait as well, right? We go to our wolf. This one. All right, so Wolf has pack tactics, uh, which gives you advantage on saving or advantage on attack rolls. Uh, so that is also automatically built in. Um, so if something has the trait pack tactics, um, you're automatically going to get advantage on uh, attack rolls. Uh, per this text. If you want to explicitly do that, um, you can. So say you had a trait that was similar to this, but not quite, right? Uh, so you can make you yourself an effect, and that would look like... I know what's in here. Here. So under the hood... Under the hood, this is how you would code this pack tag. Put it in the chat. Um, so what that says is if the target's range is five and it's an it, it has a, an enemy in range, it will give advantage on attack. So if you need to change that to 10 for some reason, because your pack tactics work a little bit different, or you can change that. In my window. Um, so we'll go through the change a little bit. Units, condition, going saves. Um, okay, so you have those macros like I talked about, like SDC, and there's also the macros like PRF and CHA that is defined in here again. So they have these macros. Yeah, these macros here. Level, perf, you can do this. Uh, on In the documentation here, it says these only work for uh, players. And the reason is because you can't put uh, these brackets in effects that apply to NPC. But with better combat effect gold, these are all accessible. Uh, for NPCs, so you can put something like this in. So, for example, so SDC will work on uh, players, and it will also work on NPCs. So if you tried to do this without better combat, we won't. so long. So we have tests, and it's going to add the uh, proficiency. So it's going to replace proficiency with proficiency bonus lit, which is apparently 7. Um, but yeah, any tags with square brackets, you can put write your effects with those in there, those macros, and put them on your NPCs. And that is pretty nice sometimes. Um, let's go through some of these. Let's go through. We'll go through change state. So I have a video on this, and it's in the channel on my YouTube. Uh, it's also linked in the documentation here. So I'm not going to go through this too much, but uh, you're going to want to use a change state basically anytime you want to activate deactivate or remove a turn. 
uh, remove an effect on some other criteria than just uh, the straight initiative value here. When this drops to zero, it usually gets taken off, but maybe you don't want it to be taken off. Um, these are grouped into uh, groups, I guess. Um, so the first one, ATS, so they're all like A, D, or R, add or activate, deactivate, or remove. So this is turn start. So this is any turn. Uh, uh, these here at activate, turn start, these are the actor that the effect's on. And then you can do it at the end of the turn too. And this is, the again, the source actor who applied the effect. So it'll act on the source of the effects initiative. And this is start, turn, end turn. There is no uh, end turn for these because basically the start and end of the turn is the same for any turn. And this list is long enough, so it doesn't need to be any longer. Um, are all these useful? Uh, perhaps uh, some of them are far more used than others. Some of them I've never used, but for completeness, they are there. Um, a lot of times what you want to use is uh, ATS, so activate at the start of any turn. And that would be effects that only happen once per turn. Um, so what you want is, where are these, Ryan? So normally there is only uh, three buttons here for five. So I've added the fourth. Uh, and it's called change state. And you can change these. And these are normal, right? The fourth one is deuce. Uh, deuce deactivates when the effect is used. And essentially, it is the same as roll, but instead of remove, it just deactivates. Um, and when these what does this all mean? Uh, you can think of like the effects processing system kind of like as a vending machine. Um, once a tag is pulled, you own it. You can't put it back. Uh, with it on all rolls, uh, essentially it's unlimited. Your vending machine's unlimited. If you start changing these to anything else, you buy it, you own it. So anytime an effect gets pulled, it's off, off the board. So you're expected to do something with it. Um, so if you have something that is once per turn, you put that to deuce. So that deactivates it like sneak attack here, but that's built in. Um, and then you want to activate it on turn start. So let's see. we'll just do it. So cast that guiding bolt again, Anathema. As you can see, it turned it off advance it, it turns it back on. So any any sort of uh, ability you have that only operates once per turn, that's what you would want. If it's once per round, you would set it to activate start, um, because then it would go through the whole round and then activate turn again, assuming you were in uh, We can talk about conditional operators. Um, these are useful to filter off things you don't want to happen. And when would you use these? These are anytime you have a description of something with if, right? So like if the target is a giant, if the CR of the creature is below five, if you have allies within range if you have temporary hit points, right? If your text says if, you're going to want to be looking to use a conditional operator. And these expand on the ones that are built into Fantasy Grounds um, to do some more stuff that you can't uh, do. So there's range. This is gets you... Um, you can do range filtering on this. Um, attack disc. This is useful for, like I've shown, you can do pack tactics or something else. 
Um, these can make your constructs go berserk or any other creature, depending on uh, how damaged they are. Like the more damage they get, you know, you have them stronger. Um, you can look for CRs. The you can look at hit points, um, how many wounds they have, and this is a percentage. Um, and the weapon properties, so you can do uh, like finesse, right? So under the hood, sneak attack basically uses what it needs out of this list and is actually calling these conditional operators under the hood. And you could code sneak attack with BCE in here, but the effect is looks atrocious. It's like four lines long and a bunch of garbly goop. Um, and then these have also have properties that describe what you can put in here. Um, and how these work is uh, these are evaluated. So whatever is in here is evaluated. And if that is true, the clauses after the if conditional operator uh, will be processed. And if the conditional operator evaluates false, it will not continue any further down the line. Um, these can also be prepended with the, the exclamation point. So if you want to invert, uh, so if you want it to continue if the evaluation is false, you can do that. And you can also prepend the Exclamation point to the built-in fantasy conditional operators, which is a line size estimate. Um, so, for example, if you wanted to be like, if so, in, if custom, not custom. This if t this should do is um, if the target doesn't have sneak attack, it's going to add ten to the spell attack, right? So uh, you can't do this with uh, vanilla fantasy grounds because. You can only get the it to evaluate to true. You can't do the inverse. Uh, and as you can see, it said plus ten to spell attack. And we can do that again without the, and it will not give it here. Um, well, I think. What else do we have here? So go through the examples, I guess. So these examples, these are not exhaustive, but the way a lot of these examples are constructed is that these demonstrate something, some sort of concept in BCE. Um, for example, I didn't go over this headband of intellect. You do int, and then it's always like, well, what should that number be, right? It's like, but if you want to write a generic effect, you do 19 minus 7. And that will uh, set your uh, intellect to 19. But this number will be whatever it is based on what your intellect is. Um, some of these other ones. So if you want to do automatic spell resistance, this is what you would do. So if attack is spell, resist all. Um, and it knows the attack is a spell, so um, it will resist all. If you have an ongoing effect, you can add spell to it as a descriptor, and it will tag that as a spell attack, and this will work. Um, when you use tags like the ongoing damage tags, it will automatically apply the spell descriptor for NPCs, you put the effect on the NPC, but we'll do it for if you uh, put stuff into your uh, powers, it won't 
automatically put that in there. And the reason because uh, when you have spell in there with regular fancy grounds, it breaks the effect, but uh, it's fine for NPCs because it's assumed that the DM is going to be running their combat effects gold the next time they have the same combat tracker open and players tend to jump tables around. So I don't want breaking stuff in there. Um, I think that's about all I have. Anybody have any questions or specific questions? Open it up. Is everyone lost? I guess I was wondering, is this going to be in the Grim Press 5e stuff? Are they going to implement your your newer things into it? Yeah, the deal with that is like uh, it is being worked on slowly. Um, the author who did that is away, so other people are doing that. One of those people is sort of me part time. Um, but it's a slow process, and it's one of those things where to do that, you really need to read through all the you can't just there's no real good way to do it other than like going through and looking at every single one and reading every single description of every single item and every single spell and every single power and every single trait and right and adjusting everything accordingly. So the answer is yes, it's a slow process. Any other questions? Or any specific asks for things? Hey, um, I think it's, it's super it's excellent. Good job you've done. I would say, I would with, say these, with these, generally, generally what you want, these, these are for ORs. We're getting some feedback, feedback from somebody. And see, it has the speakers on. Uh, I would recommend using generally these only for auras. There are certain other situations that these add effect tags are useful. Some people like to set up their powers on their person. They'll Instead of having a damage button, they will just roll it all into an effect, which I guess you can do that. I wouldn't really recommend. It's kind of not really the way that Fantasy Grounds is should work but it does work but you know it is a little bit weird okay. and we have had problems when people have done that in the past and problems as in like oh i didn't think of that because i didn't really think you were going to do that because you know you really should set it up as a separate damage power but well speaking of with aura you can do a lot of extra powerful stuff with your stuff in aura yeah, Aura and here work pretty well together. There's a lot of synergy. Uh, these tags are actually designed for Aura. Um, if you want to know specifically more about Aura, uh, go watch the Aura videos, I guess. Um, what I would say. Another thing, I guess, is if you're running any of... I'll post these in chat. So better combat effects gold, it does. If you're running any of these extensions, oh. hold on. All right, ask a question. I got to comment this. Any other questions? You have one on chat. Let's see. It's in chat. From can't, Expert Bass. Can't speak from the mic right now, but I have a question relating to the above comment. Is there a way to auto add an effect on an attack roll like there is with damage roll? Add effect to target of attack, not the attack. All right. Well, let's see. Um, that's a good question. Add attack. 
So we'll look for attack. Um, attack hit. Attack. So he wants. He wants the add effect to an effect on attack. There's where the damage. Add effect to target of the attack, not the attacker. Um, I think so. Crit, fumble, attack hit, miss, add, target, attack damage, attack damage. Apparently not, but there could be. <laughs> I mean, if you want, I could add it. I mean, it's not that. I did take feature requests. Because a lot of these, well, not a lot of these. So a lot of these are born out of frustration about not being able to do stuff in fantasy grounds that are five years as written. Um, a lot of them came about because, especially the difference between better combat effects gold and better combat effects, because when I was approached by Grim Press to kind of have some synergy with their effects packages, I worked with them so that they could flesh out stuff that wasn't available. So at that point, a lot of stuff got rolled in, and that's where from better combat effects and better combat effects. After that, it was kind of me just meandering, and a bunch of stuff in there was from uh, OGL stuff that people sent me or OGL stuff that I was playing in my game that mm -hmm. I couldn't do. So that sort of stuff got rolled in as well. But, you know, if there's something reasonable that's easy to roll in, um, yeah, I do take requests. Warpo Blade. Yeah, I think what you can do. Let's see, Warpo Blade. Can you code the effect of Warpo Blade? A critical hit on humanoid equals instant death. So, let's see. So, if. What would that be? If T type humanoid, is that actual type? I think it's condition type. Do, 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 do. Human, a uh, humanoid. Anyways, you do the if if t type whatever you want, humanoid, human, and then it would be um back crits add is one at crit add. And then it would be name it Vor Vorp. So we're gonna call it Vorp because we don't want to put destroy in our effect because it'll blow yourself. So then over here we will do something like destroy and that should do it so so you'd have to add a custom effect with a label and then that would have destroy in it and then you would do your if t type and humanoid which apparently isn't a type so you'd have to type them all out in there with commas and then you would after that because you restricted it to whatever type you wanted um, Tech critical add and Vorpal blade. Uh, I would probably recommend using uh, advanced effects extension and tying that to the blade itself instead of any time a critical happens, it does that. You don't really is destroy one of your keywords? It is one of the keywords. 
It is destroy. Destroy actor when added. Careful with it. Are these references delivered with your thing in stories now? Uh, no, they're just in the reference manual. Because otherwise, I have to keep your copy. And editing tape. Alternatively, the documentation is available by a PDF on the forums if you'd rather have this format. It's the one I use. I don't remember seeing destroy on it. Yeah, so that's useful for like destroy undead, right? So if you have cleric destroy undead turned and then damage, we're going to remove, remove it if it's turned. Um, if CR is less than you put the CR in, 0.25, and destroy. So this is what you would have as your power. And you press the effect, and it will put that on. And if it's the power is less than 2.50 or 0.25, it'll destroy it. When you say destroy, is it actually instant kill death, or is it actually removed from it? Sets the when you put destroy in an actor, it sets the hit points to zero and all the death saves are burned. Okay, yeah, that's what I want to know. So, um, yeah, that's all I got, I guess. I do want to, I'm going to put in chat here if I can get this formatted. Um, the extensions that you can use, but you don't have to, because Better Combat Effects Gold uh, duplicates all the functionality, or depending on how you look at it, really. Um, give me a second. Anyone else have any other questions? If you're running any of those extensions, you don't need to. Um, they don't conflict. The only one that would conflict is automatic spell resistance because they use spell as a damage type, and I use it as an attack in the case your indication of attack or weapon, weapon or spell attack type. Um, so there's a little bit of conflict there. So I wouldn't run automatic spell resistance with better combat. But you can run the other ones. You just don't need to because better combat does all stuff. Which are, if you can't read or if you're watching the video, is automatic pack tactics, turn-based effects, ongoing save effects, automatic sneak attack, automatic save advantage, automatic spell resistance. If not untrue effects, 5e, end of next turn. So you can take those out of your list if you have BCEG. Anything else? All right, well, that's all I have. Hopefully you guys learned something. Maybe. Did you learn something? Please say yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, thanks for doing it. And yeah, it's just a toolbox. So, uh, you know, it's like a box of Legos. Um, it's, you know, people are creative and some people are better at using my own extension than I am. So that's, and I like that when that happens. All right, that'll be it. So, everywhere, everybody, take care. Thank you. Yep.